ಸಾರಿ ವಂಚನೆ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಏನಾಂಜನ ಮನೀಮಸ ಅಚ್ಯುತಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪರಮೌಚಿತ್ಯ ಕಾರಿಣೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಔಚಿತ್ಯ ವಿಚಾರ ಚರ್ಚ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ಕ್ಷೇಮೇಂದ್ರ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಟು Uh, you know what the text is all about let's get the information about the kavi out so that uh, we can concentrate on the concept and everything so the kavi is uh, from kashmir he is uh, uh, in the 11th century usually we look at the uh, date and all of the kavis based on the king who was reigning at that point of time so the uh, it was the reign of uh, king ananta Uh, his reign was between 1028 and 1036 ad so we assume that uh, 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 kshemendra's birth must have been after 990 and before 1066 these are all information that are there in your material also so it will be useful to uh, uh, go through this um the fa- the the 990 ad is more uh, got from the date of his guru who is abhinav gupta uh, who has written a commentary on uh, dhanyaloka uh, which is again written by anandavardhana so based on that we are trying to fix the date somehow which is after 990 and he must have died before 101066 is the uh, thing as far as his ancestry goes i have given the uh, list here you can see so to raja jayadev was uh, minister was narendra and his son was bhogendra whose son was sindhu and prakashendra prakashendra's sons were kshemendra and uh, um, this person uh, chakrapala we know only until kshemendra's son somendra if uh, if there is a manuscript of somendra then we might know about him this details of prakashendra and what sort of uh, person he was that is uh, kshemendra's father we know about it from the colophon and uh, the in nauchitya vichara he has talked about his uh, uh, parents so asit prakashendra iti prakashah kashmir deshe tridasheshwara shrihi tridasheshwara shrihi he was very wealthy uh, his father so he is from a very wealthy person obviously that prompted him to sit and think about so many things and his uh, works are like uh, some 40 or so he has written the number of works that he has written uh, because of coming from a wealthy bra- background he didn't have to survive as uh, think of survival so he could sit and write na tasya atmajah sarva manisha sarva manishi shishya sri vyasadasa sarva manishi shishya is uh, his he has learned from prakashendra himself and he has also learned from many different manishi is uh, intelligent people sarva manishi shishya um true to that he has many teachers for each and every branch he has gone and studied from one person shri vyasa dasa apara punya nama he uh, so attracted towards vyasa's works that he's uh, uh, he's got a pen name called vyasa dasa kshemendra iti akshaya kavya kirti hi chakre nava auchitya vichara charcha so this is the colophon that we get at the end of the auchitya vichara where he talks about himself now about his uh, gurus he has learned from abhinav gupta acharya so that itself is a great uh, um, stamp for him as far as sahitya shastra goes so he is uh, a force to reckon with abhinav gupta himself so to have been his student you should understand the greatness of kshemendra from that itself and uh, we know that he is a guru because kshemendra has mentioned abhinav gupta as bodha varidhi and acharya shekharamani with all these epithets he has mentioned in his works abhinav gupta is uh, a propounder of dhvani school is actually the you can say that he is the second person who has come uh, to uh, um, highlight the values of dhvani the first person who did that was anandavardhana in his dhanya loka anandavardhana has just given karikas and maybe one small vritti which is not explanatory enough whereas abhinav gupta is the person who uh, uh, enriched the dhvani school with his commentary of lochana on uh, dhanya loka and his commentary on the natya shastra abhinav gupta has written one commentary there also and where he has dealt with dhvani and rasa in uh, uh, extreme detail so he is a great contributor of sahitya shastra and uh, kshemendra being his student is uh, equally Uh, adept which you will know from 
his uh, uh, theory. Kshemendra has also learned the tenets of Vaishnavism from uh, Somapada. There has been another Upadhyaya he mentions called Gangaka, Devadhara. He's learned Buddhism from Manjubhadra. So uh, essentially, he was born a Shaivite who became a Vaishnavite, but was also heavily influenced by Buddhism. Uh, he has written texts on all of these three. You'll, you'll see his list of texts and know what an expert he is. Uh, so his Buddhism also, he was uh, uh, later in his life, he was a Buddhist or before in his life, he was a Buddhist and then he became a Vaishnavite. Nobody knows. We don't know about the life of our grandfather. How can we know of someone who lived some p p thousand years ago? Right? So, like, we assume from the works that are extant today, we only have half of what he has written. Half of what he has mentioned in his other works, we don't even have those even in manuscript form. Right? Now, uh, the list of granthas that you have, I'm not going to go through each and every text because that itself will be a, a two hour lecture. Uh, just a small uh, um, understanding of what a personality he is. Uh, he has written Katha Sangrahas of Ramayana, Mahabharata. Brihat Katha is a set of stories that uh, uh, have been written on various things. And that Brihat Katha Manjari also he has written. Uh, Dashavatara Charitam. On the 10 avatars of uh, Vishnu, he has written one uh, uh, work. Bauddha Avadana Kalpalata, this is not a Katha Sangraha as such, but the different, uh, you know, the Jataka tales that you have, those Jataka Katha uh, of Buddha, he has uh, collected all those stories and written it in the form of a Padya Kavya. There are many Laghu Kavyams which are in the form of advice or satire, uh, uh, describing the, um, um, you know, the um, royal life that is there. Charu Charya is how people have to live. Sevya Sevaka Upadeshaha. One who has to, who is served and the one who is serving. Sevakaha Sevyaha. Uh, Sevakena Sevyaha Purushaha. Uh, the, he advises both of them. So he is one. Uh, I think they both Nilakanta Dikshita and Kshemendra go hand in hand as far as uh, satire goes. They, they have written a lot of uh, works on uh, uh, this ridicule and everything. Uh, he has also written Vyasa Shatakam on Vyasa, Veda Vyasa, uh, upon whom he has been influenced a lot. Uh, there are a set of uh, unpublished works or we don't know whether it is unpublished or we don't know whether it is unavailable also. That is one whole set of books are there. Uh, this Kavikarnika, there are also other two texts which he himself mentions. It could be a text or not. We will see again once the text starts. What we are concerned about are these three texts, which is Kavikantha Baranam, Auchiti Vichara Charcha, and Suvritta Tilakam. These three are the three Sahitya texts that he has written. The rest are all uh, works of literature. These three are based on poetics. So, what is Sahityam? What is that Sahityam and why we need that? Is the next. So this is this is the list of uh, works that have been written by uh, Kshemendra. Before we go into Auchitya Vichara, you can't directly you know go to the deep end and jump into the swimming pool. You have to start from three feet or two feet and then go to three feet, four feet, and then five feet. Right. So you have to understand why Kshemendra even came up with the idea of Auchitya. That itself is a process. So let's go slowly and uh, see what it is. Now, the normal communication that we have in this world are what I wish to convey to you, what you wish to convey to me. A mother talks to her daughter, uh, a father talks to his son, or the husband and wife talk to each other. These are not written as Kavya, but these ideas are taken and represented in works in different manner so why does why do uh, you know normal conversation is never treated with so much of value whereas a kavyam is treated with so much of value if you see uh, um, if we want to convey something 
it is vedas are the first method of communication which were have been there because that is the text that is available from uh, uh, ancient uh, times whereas if you look at the in in the vedas if you look at it the way it conveys uh, any order is like a how a lord uh, orders his servant so prabhu samhita ha whereas the advice that comes from itihasa and purana is like suhrit like a friend advising you have to be like this you should not be like this a kavyam tries to give the same advice like a, a woman who tries to take the man in the path that she wishes him to come so that is kanta samhita taya upadesha yuje she uses this she uses the same words that we try to use but in a very nice manner and brings him into a proper way a mother might try 100 different ways to get the son into the proper path but once he gets married she might bring him into the proper path it may turn out the other way also that is a different matter but uh, you know you understand that if it is a nice girl then she will bring him in the right path so that is kavyam kanta samhita taya upadesha yuje it tries to bring us in the right path it gives us the proper advice like a, a kanta one who is very pleasing or one who is dear to your heart how is it are those words different are those upadeshas very different no they are not very different from what we are saying it is the same words yaneva shabdan vayam alapamaha so yaneva shabdan vayam alapamaha yaneva cha arthan vayam ullikhamaha taireva vinyasa vishesha bhavyaihi samohayante kavayo jaganti they use the same words that we are talking about they use the same artha whatever upadesham that we want to tell them that is the same artha they are also using but they just place it in such a beautiful manner and they attract the entire world or they charm the entire world by that just the placement of those words and the artha to convey the meaning in a more beautiful manner taireva taireva shabdaihi arthaihi cha vishesha vinyasa bhavyaihi arthaihi shabdaihi cha kavaya jaganti mohayante they they it's a big playground for them the kavyam is like a playground right now why from you you saw a lot of these kavyam anybody can write a kavyam anybody can write a poem or a poetry or champu anything now are there any rules now, what is the need for specifying or what is the need for a branch of literature called poetics at all let's just uh, understand the kavyam and you know read a kavya and enjoy and go away what is the big deal why do we need uh, a, a yardstick here so the need for sahitya shastram came about because of a couple of reasons one is someone writes a kavyam it is so beautiful it is well received a lot of people like it another person comes and writes a kavyam he recites it in the rajya sabha but nobody likes it they say it is dead why so what is the difference what is the saundarya vishaya and what is that aswada vishaya what makes it beautiful what makes it what gives it the status of being enjoyed people want to know he has written a kavyam i have written a kavyam but people appreciate that people don't appreciate what i have written now how does this work we need to know next is there are so many aspects to that kavya what is which how what is the role played by each one nobody seem to be uh, understanding the see that is where it gets the aswada vishaya only if you understand the different parts of a kavya can you understand what gives beauty to the kavyam and then you will be able to understand why it gets the status of being enjoyed aswada yogyata how it comes to that point you can understand so you have to first know the different parts of a kavyam to understand it to uh, uh, show all these things the first text that came about to explain all these was natya shastra it was extremely comprehensive in the sense that it gave many things a huge compilation of these things started only after natya shastra there was actually a, a a big gap between natya shastra which is around the second century or so and then if you see the next contributor to sahitya shastram is only bamaha who comes up with the alankara theory 
and he his age is around the uh, uh, 7th century so there is a huge gap we only have a few commentaries here and there very sporadic uh, between natya shastra and bamahas kavyalankara sutra so there is a we don't know if there were texts that is often described as a dark period in india itself even in all spheres as far as uh, art and culture goes until the guptas came about it is described as the dark period for the culture if you look at uh, history also it will uh, match very well with what uh, the number of texts that we don't have during that century from around second century to around the fifth century but 300 years of uh, information we are missing okay so this natya shastra was the first text that came about and then a, a, a huge compilation of texts started this entire gamut if you want to study of the a study of those texts can be easily divided into three portions now the sahitya shastra text you can look at it as pre dhvani and then the dhvani school then the post dhvani pre dhvani why we talk we, we divide it today maybe it was not divided at that point of time but today when we look back at the couple of centuries of texts that have been written you can divide it into three saying pre dhvani and post dhvani with the dhvani school in between because it is a yardstick to measure what was there before and what was there after because this dhvani concept is something which till date nobody has been able to refute it even kshemendra accepts the dhvani but along with dhvani only as an addendum or not not as an addendum but as a super set he introduced the concept of aucitya here okay so the dhvani school is the most prominent concept that came about during the 9th and the 10th century in the pre dhvani set if you see you had the natya shastram and then the alankara vadins who were bhamaha bhut bhata and dandi then vamana came about with the concept of riti until then riti was there but he spoke more about the importance of riti in the 9th century and after right about after vamana you will find ananda vardhana and abhinav gupta who spoke about the dhvani now what are all these these are all the aspects kavyasya bhagaha these are all the different aspects of kavya now in, imagine rajashekara is the one who came about with the kavya purusha concept and he said kavyam is like a man and if you look at a man his angas are his shabda and the artha and then his uh, if he wants to beautify himself he will put on alankaras like bhushanam kankanam katakam haram and all these things are like the alankara and that is the first thing that strikes a person right you look at a person you look at the alankara if they are wearing all these things and na na padichina you know big big uh, uh, hara kataka and all that is there so the first thing was that was attractive in a kavyam was alankara so the, the alankara vadins highlighted that first when they were analyzing so then uh, people start, uh, then when vamana came and looked at it he said no 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 there is a there is a way in which the shlokas are written it is called the riti there is a there is a uh, um style with which they write some people write it in a very harsh style some people write in a very soft and nice style so you can uh, uh, it is big based on that style that the kavya gains an appreciability and it's not because of alankara it need not have a great alankara if the riti is beautiful then that is enough so he talked about that then it was ananda vardhana who came and kept everybody in check and he said listen alankara your place is here that's all you are not the soul of the kavya even if you are not there i can appreciate you in chakuntalam he says sarasijam anuvidham shaivalena piramyam malinam api himamsho lakshma lakshmin tanoti iyam adhika manognya valkalena api tanvi kimivahi madhurana mandanam nakritinam na aakritinam kimivahi mandanam na anything intrinsic beauty is what is more important extrinsic beauty is not important here so alankaras are all part of the external body it is not the soul 
So now what is the soul of the Kavyam and what makes it uh, uh, enjoyable? Aswadhana Yogyata Katham. When they were thinking about that, is that is when they came up with the concept of Dhvani. Now, of course, Dhani was a, a completely irrefutable uh, concept. So anybody who came after that had to establish their concept by refuting Dhvani. They thought that they should do that. See, that was the problem. So the main three people who came about with something new, because the rest of them are all just followers of Dhvani. If you take Mamata, he followed Ananda. He in fact says, Sri Abhinava Gupta Charyanam Dhvani Siddhanta. His greatest uh, follower of Dhvani is Mammata. Uh, and then if you look at uh, Sahitya Darpanam, he says, Rasatmakam uh, Kavyam, uh, Vakim Rasatmakam Kavyam. Dhvani, he does not refute Dhvani. He in fact comes to uh, uh, follow the Dhvani school in most of the time. But he had to come up with something new. So he said Rasatmakam Kavyam. Right? Now in the otherwise, if you look at it, only three concepts came about which were uh, new, which were something different. They were trying to establish something different from Dhvani, which was one was Vakrokti by Kuntaka, Anumanam by Mahima Bhatta and Auchityam by our present author Kshemendra. What is this Vakrokti? He says anything, whether it is Alankara or Riti or something like that, it is something different from normal conversation. That's all you're saying, right? It is just an Ukti Vaichitri. Before we go into Vakrakti, let me finish off with Anumana because it is easier to refute Anumana. So Anumana, Mahima Bhatta is uh, a Tarkika. Uh, he uses his Shushka Tarkika, dry logic, and tries to bring it in. And he uses that Anumanam, specifically that Anumana Pramanam, to explain Dvani. And he says, Everything can be easily said as Paksha, Sadhya and Hetu. If I have a shloka and I'm able to get this rasa from this shloka, the, I have to, uh, the Sadhyam is the Shungara rasam. Hetu is, you, I can give you n number of Hetus. I don't need to accept Dhvani as a separate Vyapara. There are problems with that. There are many criticisms. For him, he wanted to establish something new and he wanted to uh, bring his tarka into it. He thought he could uh, logically explain Dhvani and get away with the, you know, uh, push aside Dhvani Vyapara. That was his aim. But it did not stand uh, the test of time. Nobody could follow it, one thing. And you cannot deny the fact that, you know, from one shlokam, one person is enjoying something very different. He does not go through the process of Anumana. Just like in Parvato Vanniman, Dhuma Vattvat, you look, look at the mountain, there is a smoke. You then think about the different uh, uh, many times that you have seen the smoke with Agni and then you form a Vyapti and with that Vyapti you are deducing. This sort of a process doesn't even go with Dhuni. The moment you hear a shloka, the moment you hear that, you the scene is in front of your eyes and you experience that rasa. There's no other go there. right? What, uh, uh, how, where are you going through a process of Anumana there? There is no deduction there. So it did not stand the criticisms. So we will uh, dismiss that. The next theory that came about was Vakrokti. Vakrokti is okay. I mean, in the sense, he only talked about that Ukti Vaichitriyam. Ukti Vaichitriyam in the sense, uh, uh, Bhangi Ukti or in a different way. You express a, a normal conversation is not as beautiful as the way he expresses it. If I just say, you know, uh, um, the, the uh, Dushyanta did, was not sure whether he can accept Shakuntala or not. Shakuntala is standing in the um, Sabha. He has forgotten about her because of the shapam. He did not know whether to accept her or not. Now, he, 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 instead of saying Dushyanta did not know whether to accept Shakuntala or not, you are just expressing it in a different manner. That's all. Now, why should I talk about it as Dhvani? That Ukti Vaichitriyam gives an enjoyment, is what he says. That is very... Uh, 
what to say it does not explain things in detail and fully you cannot deny the existence of dhvani right now kshemendra very interesting because he is the most acceptable person of the the theories that people came about after dhvani because he did not deny dhvani that was his plus point that's the first plus point in him so he does not deny rasadhvani he does not deny vastu dhvani he does not deny anything even where if rasa has to attain the status of dhvani it should be used appropriately that was his theory okay any doubt yeah, yeah. Uh, so in order to understand um, kshemendra's aucitya vichara charcha should should we first know what dhvani siddhanta is not exactly because aucitya as such it encompasses that also you oh. don't need the uh, dhvani as such now but it will be nice to know dhvani you will read about it in pratavrudriyam in the kavya prakarana so uh, that will be good also uh, to know about dhvani dhvani is suggestion suggestion if i say one word like for example gato astam arkah that's the fair, most common example that a lot of people say like if the surya astamanam is happening the sun has set what how many people can have different different ideas suggested in their mind someone can say the sun is setting the moment a, a kavi is hearing those words he will describe the beauty of the sunset that is the suggestion for him for a person who is a brahman who is a brahmachari he for him oh i have to do sandhya vandanam at this point of time that is the suggestion that comes on his mind for a lady maybe i have to light the lamp at the uh, puja room that is her suggestion she gets from so each one can have a different suggestion in their mind with just one sentence so that is a different concept totally he includes that also if i have to get that in my mind the words have to be placed in an appropriate manner only then will each one get that suggestion in their mind at all uh so where does kavya prakasha stand in this whole uh, you know in in, in uh, the thing that you are explaining so kavya prakasham explains every as he is actually a dhvani school only so you, yeah you can probably put it under uh, uh, you know after uh, abhinav gupta in the 11th century he came about so you can put him in the dhvani school itself so why i put it as post dhvani is he is also post dhvani only but he did not come up with a different concept he was only a follower of the dhvani school oh the uh, mamatacharya yes mamatacharya was a follower of the dhvani school okay he came only after the uh, after abhinav abhinav gupta two centuries after abhinav gupta okay so but he also uh, established the dhvani siddhanta only that's not anything different not anything different no he okay. did not come about come up with a different idea okay so this aucityam is a different not Uh, something different idea but that idea has is there was there from natya shastra i will show you later how it was there in natya shastra it was there said by bhamaha so it was also said by dandi vamana ananda everybody has talked about aucityam but they did not talk about the importance of aucityam in such detail that kshemendra has given they have all mentioned it yes you need aucityam अनुचित्यादृते रसभंग कारण देर इज नो अदर इन फैक्ट ई थिंक आनंदवर्धन ओनली सेज दैट यस हि सेज वॉट इज दट रसाक्षिप्तया बंद एव्रीथिंग शुड बी अरउंड रस बट फॉर रसभंग देर इज नो अदर फेलियर अदर दैन इंप्रोपरेटी anauchityam is the uh, first cause for failure of rasa so auchityam is absolutely necessary for rasa that is the only mention he says whereas he takes that one small sutram and he, this entire text is like a bhashyam for that sutram of anandavardhanas you get it i'll say how what that auchityam is and how it has come about to this point where kshemendra has taken it to this detail 
we will know about it when we look at how the other people have mentioned it okay so these three concepts are the main new concepts that have come about after dhvani otherwise there have been no new concepts at all everything else has been dealt with by either the other alankaravadi or natya shastra or dhvani school okay now let's come to what is aucityam um fun minute what is aucityam uchitasya bhavah aucityam it's very Uh, simple definition but of course uh, uh, kshemendra is going to give a better bigger definition so let's go with uh, that is the uchitam prahuhu acharyaha sadrisham kila yasya yat uchitasya yo bhavah tad auchityam prachakshate it's a simple one where this is uchitam what is uchitam proper proper uh, is something very uh, let's say um, open ended na no? what is proper people what is accepted by the world uh, you are only talking about what is proper in the kavya in the kavyam also it has to follow what is accepted in the world if it doesn't follow what is accepted in the world it can be imaginative it can be beyond the world yes but at the same time it should conform to certain uh, uh, rules of conduct or uh, uh, those are the areas with which uh, uh, kshemendra is going to deal with like if it is uh, you know something like lakshmana uh, for example lakshmana will never name sita or he will never say hey sita if a poet has used hey sita in it then it is inappropriate then the rasa is not proper there because lakshmana will always address sita as arya he will give her so much of respect that he will not call her by name these this is that proper code of conduct so such things are all uh, so what there are many things that can come under the uh, heading of uchita what are all uchita or what are all proper okay now here uh um natya shastram he first says natyam loka swabhavaj it just follows nana bhava upasampannam nana avasthantaratmakam this world is filled with different different bhavas different different states of life that you can and uh, loka vrittanu karanam natyam he, he was only talking about natyam that was his topic so he dealt with many things bharata dealt with all the different aspects of dance and he said that dance had to follow the lokam whatever is there in the world it had to follow what is there in the world so based on that tasmat lokam pramanam kim kartavyam iti natya yoktrubih so whatever has to be done in the natya that follows what is there in the loka vayo anurupah um vesha anurupah gati prachara anurupah these are all whatever the dressing that people are wearing just because the people see you can a kavi can imagine so many things but just because uh, he can imagine so many things he can't say that the cup, um, mala that should be worn in the uh, neck can be worn as in the hand or can be worn as a hip chain odiana these are not uh, 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 will not give rise to beauty because people are so used to seeing things around their world that they can only appreciate if it is there in the proper place as they see in the outside world so the the world outside of the kavya world is also important so sloka swabhavajam natyam it is only an anukarana of what you see outside adeshajah veshah na shobham janeshyati if it is not in the proper place or if it is not suitable to that if you have a beautiful lady uh, uh, coming as uh, tataka can you appreciate that point nobody will want it. they will all feel uh, anger at rama for killing her you have to have a, a, a ghora bhayankara swarupi tataka for rama to come and kill him her. because you have to feel that krodham you have to feel that she has to be killed because she is creating havoc here that that is the adeshaj so if she is like a beautiful lady if she is portrayed like a beautiful lady that is not uchita mekhala urasi if you take your hip chain and put it on the top if you have the odiana as a haram that hasyayeva upajayate that will be appropriate for hasyarasam it is not fit for shringararasam 
if you have to if the lady nayika has to evoke shringara rasam in the nayika she has to look in a certain manner she has to be wearing things in a certain manner even if she is not wearing any jewels like valkalena api tanvi even if she is wearing a wooden bark it's okay it is that beauty that she should express if that is not expressed then hasya eva upajayate that is the auchityam that kshemendra will talk about in detail he only takes all these uh, um, capsules from each person he puts them together and arranges it in a work that's his greatness nobody had come up with such a work before i'm highlighting these points to show the greatness of the work bamaha in bamaha's kavya alankara he says kinchit aashraya saundaryat dutte shobham asadhu api even if it is asadhu even if it is not something uh, which can give you a a great beauty so if you look at a, the example he takes is a very beautiful example the same expression you will find in the mangala shloka of chenendras also so kanta vilochana nyastam malimasam iva anjanam 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 is the kanmai you know the ka, kajal that you use that kajal is actually if you look at it separately see when you are, when it is in the eye it is fine when someone is crying and that kajal is coming down it is a dirt you wipe it off even after applying the kajal you know the the black in your hand you think it is dirt and you wipe it off why do you do that if it is a beauty to the eye but it is a, a dirt in the finger that is the uchitatvam that he is talking about so kinchid asadhu api even if you treat it as dirt on your hand that kajal becomes aashraya saundaryat if it is there and the eye of the beauty beautiful lady here he talks about the eye of krishna uh, waiting to go to that mantra shloka anyway so kanta vilochana nyastam chet malimasam anjanam api malimasam api anjanam iti uchyate it is being taught of taught of a great saundarya hetu so kinchit aashraya saundaryat because it is kept at a place at an appropriate place even a dirt is called as a beauty product the, in, in dandi he takes a different angle for auchityam and he says uh, auchityam is the main contributor for kavya dosha and kavya guna virodhah sakalopi eshah kadachit kavi kaushal kaushalat utkramya dosha gananam guna veethim vigahate Ka, ka, because his uh, idea of a kavyam is kavyam tavad ishtartha uh, vyavachinna padavali ishta artha vyavachinna padavali padanam avalihi asti tatra ishtartha pada vyavachinna it is used uh, to convey the meaning that uh, the poet wishes to convey oh, so which means he uses different different words he puts them together in such a manner that the uchita artham and the vivaksha is conveyed properly if it does not sometimes a bad a dosham can also become a guna depending on the kavi kaushala if it is the if a kavi is an expert he can bring a dosha also into the guna paksha how can that how can that be possible for example vamanam and all that are not supposed to be said at all to vamanam is a vomiting see these are all words that you never use in a kavya because it is not uchitam it is called ashlila or uh, dirty things which is not uh, um, uh, which does not evoke any nice sentiment in our mind but that also will be very beautifully portrayed actually in uh, nilakanta vijay champu where the samudra mathanam happens and uh, vasuki uh, you you go back and forth with vasuki right they are churning the ocean that point of time just like how you know he is uh, getting out that visha first visha he is vomiting the visha but when you are vomiting it never comes out as a stream it will come out and then there will be a pause and then there will be a a, 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 a sound and then there will be a pause that is how you vo- that he would have described in that gadyam the whole gadyam will be beautifully described in that manner at that point of time you want to highlight the way the poison is emitted by vasuki 
So that dosha, even though that uh, emission of uh, anything should not be described in a kavyam, it becomes guna because the context is like that. That is the prakarana auchityam that you talk about, which Shemendra will talk about later. Next is Rudrata is the one who probably came closer to uh, um, Kshemendra where he talked about many different things of Auchityam. Gramyatvam Anauchityam. Uh, Anauchityam, something which is not Auchitya is called Gramya. Where are all the property that you need to look about is Vyavahara, Akasha, Vesha, Vachana, Desha, Kula, Jati, Vidya, Vitta, Vayaha, Sthanam. These are all the different places that he, Patram, even uh, uh, character should be chosen in such a manner that they, you can't have, uh, 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 who is that, Draupati in the battlefield there. You can have her in the encampment or in the palace. But you can, so th there is no character, women character at all in, uh, not many women characters in Veni Samhara because it is the battlefield uh, that is being described. Those sort of Patra Ochityam is also, he has just mentioned it, he has not given any details. Uh, next we come to uh, Anandavardhana who is, uh, 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 and Abhinav Gupta who are, uh, who Abhinav Gupta who is the guru of uh, Kshemendra who is the one who gave the importance to Auchityam. In the sense, he says, uh, Sangatana is uh, actually Vaktra. Mm, mm, Sangatana is the way the words are all joined together. I told you, right? Ishtartha, Vivachina, Padavali. That and how the words come together is Sangatana. He talked about Vishya Auchityam, Vakya Auchityam and all, but he's not given many details about all that uh, in his Dvanya Loka. But the one uh, main a karika that he has given is of extreme importance to us in Auchiti Vichara is Anauchitya Dhrite Nanyat Rasabangasya Karanam Auchitya Upanibandhastu Rasasya Upanishad Para. Upanishad means it is the most secret uh, um, uh, uh, to the success of Tattvam, secret Tattvam. Upanishad is the Tattvam, right? So Rasasya Upanishad Auchityam, Auchitya Upanibandha. Uh, uh, to the, the composition or the kavya should conform to the accepted codes of propriety. That therein lies the success of rasa. That is the secret, the greatest secret for rasa's success. Rasasya Upanishad para. Uh, why? Why does he say that? Anauchitya drite without uh, anauchitye, anauchityam, that is without other than impropriety. Rasa Bhangasya Karanam Kimapi Anyad Nasti. For the destruction of Rasa or the failure of Rasa, there is no other thing other than Anauchitya. If there is Anauchitya, then there is no Rasa Pratiti for the uh, um, Sahridaya. The listener or the seer who sees the Drishya Kavyam or the person who listens or reads the Shravya Kavyam, he will never have the uh, Rasa Pratiti. Then he cannot enjoy. Now you see why the Sahitya Shastram came and culminated here actually. Because he, this Auchityam, and he, uh, Kshemendra took up this Auchityam to say, you may talk about Rasadvani, you may talk about Vastudvani, you may talk about the greatest. Why does a Dvani Kavya even become Guni Bhuta? Guni Bhuta is the second level of Kavya. You, you have three different Kavyams where it is the Uttama Kavya, Madhyama Kavya and Adama Kavya. Uttama Kavya is the Dhvani Kavya. Uh, Madhyama Kavya is your uh, Guni Bhuta Vyangyam. And Adama Kavya is Chitra Kavya. Why does a Dhvani Kavya even go to the status of a Guni Bhuta? Why, do, why is there even the existence of a Guni Bhuta Kavya? It's because of the lack of Auchityam in expressing the Rasa. He goes to that extent and says, Rasasya Jeevatu Bhutam Auchityam. It's a great theory that he came about and the concept that he came about and he gave it in detail also. Right? So that's why Anauchitya Dhrite Rananyadu Rasabangasya Karanam Auchitya Upanikandastu Rasasya Upanishadu Para. This is a very important shloka. This is like a sutra param for the bhashyam that he has written as Auchitya Vichara Charcha. Now, uh, uh, the Grantha Parichayam of uh, Auchitya Vichara, if you look at this, there are no chapters in this. It's just like more like an article or a paper uh, where he is uh, 
propounded this theory of auchityam which is not new which is which has existed before i have just taken that auchityam and i am trying to give it a lakshana and give it different examples where and all it can be uh, it can exist and uh, he uh, he divides it into uh, i think five parts yes he divides it into five parts there are 27 auchitya prabedas that he explains and those five parts are the first set is mimamsa based then is sahityam based then it is vyakarana lokatantra and kavi sambandha kavi sambandha is the maximum because it is on the onus of the kavi to uh, you know use his intelligence to get the characters and get the rasa in a proper manner that's why he devotes more time on the kavi also of course rasam is the maximum time he devotes on it uh, now the mimamsa is pada vakya and prabandha padam is words even one single word just as i told you you know lakshmana if he uses sita then the whole auchityam is gone that is the pada auchityam he has to say arya there to get the respect out he cannot say sita so pada auchityam vakya auchityam is the way the sentence is uh, uh, done prabandhartha is whom you are taking as your character or what is the result of that prabandha you look at the entire text each one the, the another uniqueness of this text auchitya vichara is that for every uh, um prabedha auchitya prabedha he gives an example and a counter example which not many people have given see not no, no nobody has given i would say you know a lot of people have only given you know what is the example of dhvani if it is not like this then it is not you know the counter example nobody has given vyatireka drishtantam they everybody has given only an anvaya drishtanta so he he excels in the fact that if you give an shloka for pada auchityam he will also say nadu atra He, uh, mostly for him i think he takes from rajashekara and attacks him uh, he in fact attacks uh, even bhavabhuti which i don't accept but that's okay pada uh, auchityam so he says each one uh, he will give an example and a counter example for each of them sahitya sambandha ar guna auchityam gunam is madhurya prasada and there are different types of gunas which we will again look at then alankar alankarana auchityam ರಸ ಔಚಿತ್ಯ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಆರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ಈವನ್ ದರ್ಬ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಕಾರಕಂ ದಟ್ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಲಿಂಗಂ ದಟ್ ದ ವಚನ ದಟ್ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೇ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಉಪಸರ್ಗ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋಕತಂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಈಸಿಯಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕಾಲ ದೇಶ ಇಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ವಸಂತ ಋತು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲವ್ ಸೆಂಟಿಮೆಂಟ್ Uh, how can you describe love sentiment in shishira maybe you need to look at ritu samhara where he describes all six seasons the way it is and how you can right but kala desha and all is uh, he takes up examples and counter examples for everything and gives it so this is how the whole text has been arranged uh we have time we will look at the uh, we will look at the mangala shloka and then we will stop uh till now i hope you have no doubts okay um kritari vanchane drishti hi yenaanjana marimasa achutaya namastasmai paramauchitya karine starts off by laying his own uh, concept in this it's both a namaskriya and uh, a vastu nirdesha put together see mangala shlokas are already always ashir namaskriya vastu nirdesho vaapi tan mukham tan mukham kavyasya mukham the beginning of a kavya should always have either an ashir vachana or a vastu nirdesha or namaskriya atmaka mangala shlokam here it is namastasmai achyutaya i uh, uh, pray to that achyuta uh, who is a parama auchitya karine parama auchitya tasmai parama auchitya karine achyutaya namaha i bow to that achyuta vishnu it doesn't say vishnu here that itself is an achyuta uh, the auchityam here the word uh, achyuta the way he uses the word achyuta itself indicates that it's the parama auchityam uh, tatra so uh, um, i bow to achyuta who parama auchitya karine who does everything in a very appropriate manner hmm? uh, 
and um, what is the other one ah, arivanchane yena arivanchane swa drishtihi malimasa krita anjana malimasa krita yena arivanchane drishtihi anjana malimasa krita tasmai parama uchitya karine achutaya namaha uh, yena by whom uh, arivanchane ari shatru shatru vanchane um, uh, to cheat uh, the enemies that is the asuras he used uh, anjanam that is that uh, kajal in his eye mali masa krita drishtihi his eye was made dirty mali masa krita katham anjanena with that kajal he uh, made his eye very dirty so that is what i said kinchit um, aashraya saundaryat um, what is that uh, kinchit aashraya saundaryat uh, asadhu api Mm. I just seen i forgot ah okay so the it, it gains a beauty because of the ashrayam right so arivanchane the arivanchanam is during the samudra mathana samaye he did that yeah any doubt okay uh, samudra mathana samaye during the you know churning of ocean he uh, took up the form of mohini avatar that is when he put uh, kajal in his eyes that is the uh, um, uh, situation he is talking about here kshemendra so arivanchane to cheat the asuras he made his eye dirty with the anjana malimasa he, he he used that uh, black thing in his eye uh, the word achuta itself if you look at it in bhagavatam he says tvayi uh, achuta avishati chittam apatrapam me rukmini writes a love letter to krishna she says श्रुवा गुणा भुवन सुंदर श्रृण्वतांति निर्विश्य कर्ण विवर हर तो अंगताप आफ्टर लिस्निंग टू ऑल द ग्रेट क्वालिटी ऑफ यू भुवन सुंदर सो ब्यूटिफुल इन द एंटर थ्री वर्ल्ड यूर द मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल पर्सन एंड आफ्टर लिस्निंग टू ऑल युअर गुणा निर्विश्य कर्ण विवर हर तो अंगताप दो कथा वाट एवर ऐव लिस्न टू दे एंटर थ्रू द इयर एंड रिमूव द संतापम दट ई हेव फॉर यू I, I have fallen in love with you, Rupani says. You know, I have fallen in love with you, and it removes all the santapa. Now, what is the course of action? Thwai achuta, my mind enters into you. Thwai achuta, avashati chittam, apatra pamme, without any worry about whether people will laugh at me or not, ridicule me or not. My mind has gone into you. I, I, I have completely uh, given myself to you. Who, who is that here krishna is described as achyuta achyuta na chevate na skhalati swarupatah one who does not slip from his swaswarupam he does not slip from character he does not slip from character in the sense he does everything that is uchitam if he had to take up a lady character he took it up and even in that lady character he did not slip away from that character he even applied that kajal to look uh, real to get into character so that is achyuta achyuta uh, achyuta namaha tasmai so you have both the ishta devata namaskar atmakam where uh, uh, you you see that kshemendra likes uh, krishna here and so he uh, does a namaskara purvakam mangalam and uh, because he uses that word achyuta and arivanchana samaye drishtihi malimasa krita anjana malimasa krita it was made rendered uh, you know black because of that uh, the character that is that he had to take it is the patra auchityam if you go about it it's the kala auchityam desha auchityam at that point of time he had to do that kala auchityam also if he did not do it at that proper time then the asuras would not get cheated in order to cheat them in order to uh, you know uh, um, attract them he had to do it at the proper time and here he uses that word pada auchityam also achyuta padam pade api auchityam vartate so at every uh, word he has put in that auchityam right <laughs> उचित्यचारिष्ट हिस्सो विदिस
and further next he is going to talk about the aucitya mahima in the and how it is the rasasya jeeva jeevatu bhutaha bhutam aucityam he will start on that we can go to the text next hmm? any doubts with this uh, no it's just the way that you ex- 